Okay, Chair, I can confirm you're live on YouTube. Thank you very much. Evening all. You might be quite pleased to hear we've got a relatively short agenda tonight. So in theory, we should be out here in good time. However, <laughs> so thank you for attending today's uh, Regeneration Development Panel. The Democratic Services Officer will now conduct a roll call to check who's present at the meeting. When she calls out your name, could you please switch your microphone on and confirm your attendance? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Beale. Present. Councillor Bershaw. Present. Councillor Blunt. Present. Councillor Bone. Present. Councillor Bubb. Present. Councillor Collingham. No. Councillor Colwell is attending via Zoom. Present. Councillor Crofts. Present. Councillor Dickinson. Present. Councillor Hennigan. Present. Councillor Kemp. Present. We have portfolio holders, Councillor Beals. Present. Um, Councillor Diwali. Present. And Councillor Morley on Zoom. He, he is there, yeah. yeah. I think that's everyone. Thank you, Chair. I have received apologies from Councillor Collingham as well. Thank you. We also have the following officers present in the room. We've got Duncan Hall, Hannah Woodhandy, uh, Matthew Henry and Deborah. Can I remind everybody that this meeting has been recorded and streamed live via YouTube. By attending this meeting, you're giving your permission to be recorded and streamed. Please keep your microphones turned off until invited by myself to speak and speak clearly into the microphone. Turn your microphone off once you finish speaking. Thank you. First item on the agenda is apologies for absence. I've got Councillor Collins, which I mentioned a second ago. Anyone else? Okay, the second item on the agenda is the minutes. Is the panel content that I signed the minutes of this last meeting? Great, great. Thank you very much. Item three on the agenda is the declarations of interest. Have any members got any interest to declare, Deborah, please? Um, I'm on the, it's with regards to item 10 and 11, uh, the riverfront one. I'm on the uh, Kingsland Town Deal Board. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I, I don't take an active role in this this committee, obviously, but I'm also a member of the Town Deal Board. Thank you. Item four on the agenda is urgent business. I haven't received anything. Item five is members present under standing order 34. We've got Councillor Colwell um, on Teams. Chairman's correspondence, item six, I haven't received anything, which takes us on to the first order of business, which is item seven. And that's the sale applications referred to cabinet. And hold yourself, please. Thank, Thank you, you Chair. Uh, you have before you a short report um, outlining the um, application re recommended to Cabinet for funding for over £50,000 um, uh, for the purchase of Terence and St John or Village Hall for uh, Terence and St John Parish Council. Uh, the item was heard at the 5th of March, um, at Silk Spending Panel, and it was recommended um, forthwith. Um, you'll note from the paperwork that's um, certainly at the back of the proposal that we've had late kind of representations from Liz Trust in support. Um, that was received after the still spending panel, but has been attached here um, for completeness uh, and to Cabinet um, uh, as well. Page 25 of your agenda pages, um, you know, sets out the detail with regard to the application. But, um, you know, before we still spend in the panel, recommending uh, that it be approved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Over to the floor. Any comments, etc. Nobody? Councillor Hennigan, please. I'd like to well just say something in support of it, really. I mean, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, uh, Village Hall is always very well, a very good resource for a community to have, and um, I'm glad to see the application is going to be supported. Um, can I just ask, the amount of requested is 150,000. Do we know overall how much, I may have missed the figure, I'm sorry if I have, but overall how much the the purchase is going to be? Are we, would that be supporting the, the full amount? Papers, yes, it will. Uh, you'll note there's a match funding, our internal funding from the parish council uh, put in £30,000, but that is the estimate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. It, it is worth noting that the 
um, village, hall, village Hall Committee set up circa 2004 and has been doing a lot of charity events, fundraising ever since then to try and get themselves a hall. So there's a lot of good work gone in, gone in the past. Councillor Ball, please. please. Um, who will the asset belong to that the power shall take here? Yeah. That's how I understand it. Is that... <laughs> who would the asset belong to the village hall the power shall? Yeah. Anyone else wish to speak? I, I don't think, having since that Shiona's got a village hall, which rather surprises me, well, we ought to support this, because a village of that size, without a village hall, I was surprised to discover that. So I think we ought to give them all the support, because I know where this chapel is. My mum was a chapel organist, and she played in there a few times. And it's an ideal place right in the middle of the village, off the main road. And it's an ideal thing for us to support. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, as much as it's a, a shame the church is a really struggling Methodist Catholic, except um, Church of England, they're all really struggling at the moment, and this does make good use of the asset, doesn't it? So. Thank you. Um, is this the full cost of the project, or is it just the cost of purchasing the actual building? That's the cost of purchasing the building. Were there, is there any comment about the extra cost? Because it's, it's, it's a reasonable building, but it's just knowing how whether... What extra money they will have to pay? To, no, to go. no. I mean, the detail before you is on page twenty-five, and there's no additional um, information um, other than uh, there's, you know, that there's extra money, internal funding of thirty thousand pounds reserves allocated for um, the project um, in this financial year, or when this went, probably the last financial year carried over now. Is it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if everybody is content, um, Councillor Murray, he couldn't make it tonight, he's had other meetings, so I won't pass over to the portfolio holder. Councillor Kemp, did you want to speak on this one? Um, yes, I do support this one. I think we should be doing a lot more for footpaths. Footpaths? The, the West right. Lynn one. Right. That's, a lot that's not on done. tonight's agenda, as I previously told you before this meeting. So we, we'll leave that one there. Thank you very much. Uh, over to Councillor Colwell, do you want to add anything? Shall I take silence as golden? Oh, can you can you hear me now? Um, no, uh, nothing further to add other than uh, my support. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. So the, the recommendation on this one is the panel of requests to consider the report and make any appropriate recommendations to Cabinet or indicate their support for the Cabinet recommendations. I think looking around the room from the nods we've had, the comments we've had, I think we're all in support anyway, aren't we? Thank you very much. So the Cabinet recommendation is... Cabinet were invited to consider and confirm applications uh, for civil infrastructure funding. Thank you very much for that. Item eight on the agenda is the work programme and forward decisions list. So we've had a, a session a couple of months back now about the, the transport side of stuff. Um, I've, I've briefed it before that the, the, the local plan, housing needs assessment, the draft housing needs assessment, all say that we're, we're going to get around 11, sorry, we're, we're 11,100 houses short come 2036. 11,000 houses is basically 22,000 cars. You know what it is like getting into town now. Um, you know what it's like getting around the area. The, the 4,000 house estate at West Winch is going to bring circa 8,000 cars. Uh, so, so the idea is that those people will will live and work around this area. I think the reality of it, with the the um, silicon fence bringing up Cambridge direction, the, the new medical industries down that way, I think the reality of it is, is people can't afford to live in Cambridge. Eagerly down, they, they keep coming out this way. I think the reality is a lot of the people who are going to live there are going to commute to Cambridge. As it stands for that development, the the closest train station is still the centre of town. You you know how how restrictive the car parking is there anyway. So what I'd like to do is set up a, a, a an informal working group. We've already got the the, the um, Kings Lane transport strategy anyway, but the the timings of that don't work for us really. So what I'd like to do is set up that informal working group. Um, I'd like to open it up to all all council um, all borough councillors, um, not just those in this room, because I know there's some other camp members who aren't on R and D that are also keen on this anyway. Um, so the, the first thing we'll have to do if we are in agreement is obviously set up terms and conditions and, and stuff like that. Can I add anything? Yeah, just to, just to say the um, we've 
previously spoken at the meeting about the work that the um, County Council are doing to refresh the Kingsland Area Transport Strategy. And we've already had a session um, here about thoughts and, and ideas around, around that and to feed into that. But in terms of the programme for consultation that they've set out, as you've said, it um, doesn't really align with the meetings that we've got. So I think uh, a more sort of intensive session of a smaller group focusing on uh, strategic transport issues um, would, would be helpful, I think, at this stage, given the importance of that transport ambition. Um, so, uh, yes, as you said, um, I think the next step is to prepare uh, terms of reference for that um, for that group and uh, socialise that then with uh, this group and, and, and then wider, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. So I recently went over to County Hall and attended the, the Norfolk Rail Prospectus, um, the working group there. And there was three abysmal lines in there that basically said it is muted that Kingsland wants a new station. And, and that was it in the entire prospectus. You looked at all the other areas and there was uh, quite a lot of detail about who wanted what, where, why, and all the rest of it. So the, the funding line for that is December 2025. So ideally through this working group, I'd like us to be in a position where we work out where, how, what, all the rest of it, and then we're in a position to apply for that funding in 2025 and, and put a, a good business case forward. So the, the the first thing I'm going to do is is ask councillors for comments, um, and then the if we decide that we are going to set that group up, then the the next thing would be um, any councillors that wish to be on the group. So first one is is comments from councillors. Councillor Kemp. Yes, this is a very good idea because although that's the um, England Transport Strategy is being reviewed, we need to have a much more local focus for it, a lot more practical suggestions, um, giving people opportunities not to drive into Lynn, making sure that we work with bus companies as well to increase opportunities there and all sorts of things like cycling and walking. And I think there's a lot that can be done at a much more local level. So, yes, and I would like to be part of that group. Thanks. Thank you. Please. So I'd like to be on the on the group. Let's, let's take it forward. Definitely, yeah. And thank you for your work previously before I was a councillor on this as well. I know you've done a, a lot of hard work on this in the past. Thanks, Councillor Bond. Thank you. I'd like to speak in support of the um, proposal. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll have the time to actually commit to it, but I think it's a really good idea that you've put it forward and, and uh, we will be getting uh, ideas coming from at a localised level. So, yeah. forward you for putting that forward. Yeah, I'm quite happy to join the group. Okay. okay. So we got four names already, um, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bob, Councillor Blunt and myself. And then um, once we've got the terms of reference, we'll, we'll throw that open to a wider audience. So, thank you very much. So the, the next part of that uh, agenda item then is ask the panel to note comment on the cabinet forward decisions list. Have we got any comments? We've got a, quite a, a light list at the moment, haven't we? Councillor Bond, please. Um, it's probably the latter rather than sooner, but considering the the, the risk and the end sustainability and the, the actual um, subsidies we have to put forward to a live leisure with regards to our swimming pools, it might be something that we need to consider at a later date um, because they're probably not unsustainable and perhaps the idea of providing new swimming pool facilities could make it more financially viable and and protect those um those services in the future so i'd like that probably at a later period and perhaps yeah. invite people from the live leisure to come and speak with regards to that yeah do you want a form for them for that or do you want to add that there, there is a report i don't know whether the four decisions list have been updated by the time we went on the agenda, but there is a report on arrangements for a live leisure on the board decisions list for June. And um, so that will be coming yeah. through the panels, whether it will be this panel or ENC or a combined panel meeting, but that will come through the panels before it goes to cabinet. Councillor Dickinson, please. I'm sorry, Chair, but um, you moved on from the previous item too quickly for me to guess comment in. Sorry, yeah. May I speak on that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. Apologies, I didn't see your hand up. But no, you, 
<laughs> you sort of went on before I could put my hand up. Right, brilliant. Uh, so perhaps just as much my fault as yours. So. Yeah, no problem. Um, my comment is that the work plan is for the whole of the year and hasn't really got anything in it at all at the moment. Um, and I noticed that there are several items that are to be scheduled. And I have to say, it's probably fairly obvious that I've got um, more than a passing interest in the Hunstanton master plan. Um, and I, I would really like to know when we might schedule that for consideration at this panel, please. Yeah. Uh, and possibly some of the others you know, yeah. if our work plan is so empty, why haven't these been scheduled yet? And there might well be a good reason, but I yeah. ask it nevertheless. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the, the work program is light, so I do want to program all of these in at some point. Oh, yeah, definitely. Any other comments from councillors? Anything else you'd like to add in? Councillor like Camp? Yes, we've got the economic strategy, which, which we're looking at. And one thing that's come to light is um, the issue of broadband. Although it's a county matter, it really affects us because um, West Norfolk was left out of the county's application for Project Gigabit, which meant that um, ourselves and North Norfolk haven't benefited from um, the, the partnership between BD UK and City Fibre. Um, things that the application has gone in quite late. I did press for it but um, it seems that areas for example of clench Wharton have been left well, out and so just I think to keep it quite quickly then to put it into the economic strategy because I think it needs to be right up at the top and proven so, broadband. So are you on an agenda item then to look at the economic strategy or purely the broadband side of it? Um, well broadband to be part of the economic strategy a very important part of it for focus I think it really is there because it's about yeah. connectivity and, and working as well and saving car journeys. It fits all, it ticks all the boxes. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we've got that in June anyway. Um, I have to make sure we include the broadband side of it. But, I mean, we're going to have a look at that strategy anyway. Don't sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, that specific point because the strategy is in development at the moment i'll i'll pick that up with the team and with counter council colleagues would the chair just to say this is quite important i um, bd uk which are bill digital uk who seem to be sort of funded by the government are doing a review of areas including west norfolk are they doing uh, that before include, june yeah before june oh, yeah and so okay. if if um the officer could liaise with bd uk because we really need to say all of west norfolk needs to be there in fact, particularly the rural areas. Thank you for that. Any other councillors? No? Okay, can I get uh, councillors to comment and suggest on the, uh, the work programme, please? Okay, just remind uh, members that there's a, a form that we've all previously had that if you wish to add an item, we can complete that and we'll consider it. Item nine on the agenda is the date of the next meeting. And that's to note the next meeting of the panel is scheduled to take place on Wednesday, the 15th of June at 6 p.m. Item 10 on the agenda is the Riverfront Reba Stage 3. And I just need to remind councillors on this one that the um, the costs is exempt. So if they do need to go into the cost side of stuff, then we'll have a closed session at the end. So I'm just going to hand over to Matthew Henry, if you don't mind. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Chair. Um, the, um, the project manager for this uh, project recently left us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and the person taking over the project is unavailable today because they're undertaking a workshop session. So I'm afraid you've got third fiddle, not even second fiddle, so bear with me. Um, Obviously, this is the town deal funded um, riverfront regeneration project, and it's kind of got four strands to it. So there's the um, custom house and Purfleet area, Devil's Alley, public realm, dry side facilities linking with the existing pontoons. And then behind that, there is a uh, an events program being developed that will help um, hopefully drive uh, footfall and interest uh, in the wider riverfront area and linking into the town. So. When I say linking into the town, there is another town deal funded project called Rail to River, um, which is dealing with some um, physical adaptations to the, the link between the high street and where the custom house is. And some works have happened there fairly recently with um, 
pods uh, going there as well. So there is a presentation, and I think it should be coming up on the screen soon. Um, it's in a PDF format, so it doesn't automatically flip over onto the next slide. So I'm gonna have to sort of ask uh, Georgia to scroll down as and when necessary. So can you scroll down, please? It is the same one that's in the pack. Okay, so the updated, the updated version. So, so when the agenda was sent out, we had um, a presentation from Graham Massey Architects. However, that has since been updated and that came in in the last couple of working days. And I think Becky has circulated that or put it onto Modgava or both. Um, so you've got the most up-to-date one now. Um, I'm quite happy to take questions as we go, if you want. So it is broken down into Customs House and Perfleet, Devil's Alley and Dryside. So if I can do sections, and then if everybody wants to ask a question, please do, and I'll do, try my best uh, to answer them. So um, obviously, as you know, um, Kingsland Waterfront uh, is kind of quite an important area albeit a little bit lifeless in places, and that was part of the rationale behind identifying this site uh, to um, seek town deal money to help improve it and create activity. Next, next slide, please. Um, the colouring isn't showing up terribly well on your screens, um, but basically there's two key sites. There's one to the north, which is the Custom House from Perfleet, um, and then down to the bottom near Millfleet is um, what we call the Devil's Alley area or Millfleet. Um, and there was an original intention to try and connect up the key with various works, but over time they've been proven too difficult in terms of cost, um, the, 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 the way the key's constructed, who owns it and all this sort of stuff. So this, this really focuses on Customs House Perfleet area and down by the Millfleet. Okay, so, um, sorry, just before we move on, it says catalyst for further investment. I'll come on to that later because that relates to the remnants of the grain silo site or former grain silo site and the Southern and Thomas site. So next slide, please. So this was the outline project objectives um, was to, as I said earlier, expand and enhance the riverfront activity, uh, diverse uses, encourage pop-up initiatives. Um, public spaces, uh, and obviously it's a really important area for heritage assets, significant density of listed buildings, but also some significant listed buildings such as the Custom House. Um, hopefully sort of promote a sustainable future, bringing in green infrastructure uh, and push and drive economic performance. Um, that partly links to uh, bringing buildings back into use, bringing sites back into use, but also creating um, uh, uh, an area where small businesses can come and uh, undertake their activities and um, hopefully there'll be evidence of change as, as we go through and, and complete the project. Next slide please. So the, the site is or sites are pretty constrained by, the, by a number of issues. Um, obviously um, there are two conservation areas. I mentioned the significant list of buildings. Uh, there's quite a lot of residential uh, use in the area. Um, and the Environment Agency has flood defences along, the, along the, the whole area, um, and obviously traffic flows up and down um, the, the, the key front as well. Next slide, please. And the next one. So moving on to the Custom House, uh, obviously the Custom House is a building that was operated as a tourist information centre, has been closed for quite some time. Uh, it is one of the kind of most significantly listed buildings, I understand, potentially the top two and a half percent in the country, you know, is that that important. Um, and obviously it's in a very beautiful setting with a body of water called the Perfleet. Um, but the building is, is not in use at the moment, apart from we put some meanwhile use in there with um, a, a local uh, gallery uh, just to keep a bit of activity going around uh, uh, the site. So... The building sat empty and unused and a, a, a little bit unloved uh, for a little while. So the idea was to bring that back into public use, make it more accessible, enhance it and create spaces that were kind of multifunctional. So in the past, people have latched on to oh, another coffee house. That is not the intention. It, that was just shown as what potentially could fit into the space. So the idea is actually to create a space that can be used for a multitude of functions because the, the building is actually quite small. So the ground floor, there's quite not a lot of floor space. Then you've got to go upstairs again. There's a bit more space on, on, on the first floor, but it is still relatively small. So if it was just for an exhibition, it would be quite small and you, people would visit it once and never go back again. 
So the idea was actually we'll, we'll enhance the building um, by opening it out, hopefully connecting it with the outdoor space, um, provide an access lift to the upper parts um, and set it out so that you know you could hold an event in there, you could uh, do some exhibitions in there, you could have um, functions in there, particularly with the outdoor space, you know, it'd be a fantastic sort of wedding uh, venue uh, as well. Uh, particularly if you've got the outdoor space right. Okay, so if you want to go to the next slide, please. The other thing I forgot to mention is the key area um, was um, the idea is to sort of put in the infrastructure so that stalls, holders, etc., could come in and hook up to electricity supplies, for example. So you could put on a, a fair, a, fun, a, a food fair, uh, or, or things like that. So these, by the way, there's 52 slides, but they're, they're mainly pictures, so don't worry about the sort of death by text and PowerPoint. Um, so this was the stage two proposals, and this is what I was referring to. It was shown pretty much as a Catholic type use, which um, I think rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. Um, but it was just to show what opening the space would look like and also connecting the outdoor space with the indoor space. Next slide, please. So what I forgot to say is Reba Stage 2 is actually about concept concept and design. And the Reba Stage 3 is pretty much more detailed design, almost ready to go into the planning system. So obviously there's been consultation uh, gone on with a variety of bodies. And I have to say there's probably a little bit more work to do, particularly with historic England. So as you can see, the, um, the idea with the custom house was to potentially open up some of the closed off arches so the building was originally designed by Henry Bell and the ground floor was an open arcade area. So it was actually open to the elements. And then quite early on in the building's life, the arches were blocked up to create an indoor space on the ground floor. So part of the architect's idea was to have a nod back to the original Henry Bell design by not necessarily opening up the arches, but by putting in high quality bronze glazing so that it would kind of you know, really lift the, sorry, design is very subjective. So some of us think it would lift the, the appearance of the building and not everybody agrees with that. So um, we'll come to that a bit later. Next slide, please. So this is some of the, the responses to the consultation and the, the current designs have sort of tried to take into account a lot of uh, what has been said. So the original designs was to try and open up as many of the arches as possible to let more natural light in and to balance out the, the look of the, the external fabric of the building. However, that has caused a little bit of controversy and historic England have commented on, um, they might not want all the arches opened up. Uh, mm -hmm. And what they're wanting us to do is a bit more work in terms of the justification for opening up some of the arches uh, and particularly how it relates to the fabric of the building and the heritage of the building as well. And what we've said is we, we want to create a facility that is really sustainable in the future. I don't think any of us want to invest this amount of money. It works for three months, then it closes again. So this is what we've been trying to do, work on, a, on something that you can adapt and change the use quickly to accommodate a, a need or whatever, so that it keeps going, it keeps living, and et cetera. So the architect's trying to take in uh, to account a lot of what has been said by particularly Historic England and our conservation officer. Um, and obviously we've had a public consultation event where pictures were exhibited um, and um, the, the members of the public came. And I think we had a really good um, response uh, from that consultation exercise. Next slide, please. So again, these are just some images of um, the proposals to uh, on the western elevation that uh, faces towards the River Grey Twos. There's two leaded windows on that elevation at the moment is proposed to create um, um, access doorways out into the public realm area. And then also on the on the elevation that uh, lights onto the Perfleet, uh, again, to, to create that natural light. Next slide, please. That's just a view, uh, I think, from Perfleet Street. So at the moment, there's a sort of a timber blue door with a bit of glazing around it. But again, it's connecting through to the uh, windows at the far end so you can see through the arcade. Um, next slide, please. Again, just an image of showing potentially what it could look like with that natural light mm. coming in. Um, and uh, what the architect's done is actually put heating panels on the ceiling um, so that it frees up 
kind of wall space because you're losing some wall space by opening up uh, some of the arches. And again, it is just about showing space. And then you can, on the right hand side, you can see a sort of a, uh, a countertop area. And again, that is if you're having a function, you can have it to serve food and drink and this sort of thing. Um, or be a sales space if you've got an exhibition in there. Uh, so you can set up your till, etc. Next slide, please. Again, just, just different formats of potential uses. You know, there's a bit of exhibition going on there and set out as tables. Next slide, please. And this is in the upper parts of the first floor. Um, so again, it's just showing some exhibition space or, you know, putting on some talks in the evening. You know, there's uh, quite a lot of that stuff goes along in Kings Lynn anyway, and it'd be great to enhance that. So what I forgot to mention is um, on the ground floor, uh, I mentioned the lift, but there's also a proposal to put an accessible toilet on the ground floor. Um, and then on the second floor, some additional toilets. So those who are more ambulant can make use of the upper floor toilets. Next slide, please. Sorry, these are some just architectural drawings. You can't read the detail. So we'll just move on to the next slide, please. And similarly, they're just some elevations and um, uh, for the architects. Next slide, please. And again, I mean, obviously you can look at those in detail, but they probably won't mean too much. So next slide, please. So that was a quick canter through um, Customs House and Perfleet. And um, I'm Chair, if you want me to pause and if, if the panel members want to ask me questions, I'll try to answer them. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. So initially, I wasn't keen on so much glass, but now you've said about the natural light, it does make a, a, a lot of sense. Because the, the initial thought there, when you look through some of these pictures, it is there is hardly any wall space left for exhibitions, etc. Um, Councillor Bourne. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to come on behalf of the conversation and the public, because this came up in uh, a ward forum meeting, and it was absolute outrage at the possible proposal. Uh, for this, I appreciate that the 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 actual glazed units is restoring it to its original uh, thing, but the members of who are quite affluent and influential people in the ward forum feel that that is that restoration is actually um, restorative vandalism um, by taking out the later improvement of the work. Uh, the practicalities for the best use of that building was what, what it actually was, which is a tourist information centre. It could be served so much better and have more practical use. It, that is the most iconic building of King's Lynn. We use it for our advertising. It is the destination that we should go. And it, as a tourist information centre, it could enhance that. As well, uh, I welcome um, the, the actual lift to the support in the room. It would have been better in this report if we actually see what historic things we are altering because what's there, what's there before and what we the alterations and what we're removing. Again, we're removing layers of our history. In the drawings, it looks like the chains were removed, the proposals to make uh, remove the cobbles. It's uh, that's part of the chain uh, charm. I do appreciate we, we need to make it more accessible, but actually removing our historic charms is so few cobble areas. In our town, uh, in our country, uh, in, in the country as a whole, because they've uh, been removed. Wedding venue right next door to the probation service, probably not the uh, probably not the best size, and, uh, and would rely on the outside service. And um, and and with regards to um, a coffee shop, I know it's not on the on the plate, but then you're taking away the business opportunities from the guild or the potential. You're creating business with the fact that I'm not against it per se. Though a lot of the residents of that I support, that well, me and Councillor Hennigan support, are uh, slightly outraged by it. Um, so, so yeah, I think that the, the tourist information service could be enhanced and a better offer. Perhaps uh, a, a retail unit that actually sells. Um, stuff relating to the Kingsland history um, and the museum, but that is the best uh, portfolio. And with regards to the architectural drawings, they've not actually done much to enhance the Perfleet Quay. Uh, and in fact, they've actually removed the things of historic interest. That, um, to that. That's what we should be doing in Kingsland in regards to our custom house, is actually advertising what we are. We were a historic, very historic town with very significant historic assets. And that that should be the purpose of that. So I'm just with with what's in the report, I'm just wondering how many of the people from the ward forum was actually able to attend that consultation or 
uh, has it been um, fluffed up a bit um, to to make it less thingy? So that's my views, and that's the views of the rep of the people that we uh, Dev and I represent. Um, with regards to that, um, well, I'll, I'll save my further comments with regards, but I do, I'm concerned about the impact on the conservation period area and the people that live there but i'll come back to that when we go to the devil's alley because that's largely where that area is residential thank you matthew would you like to come back on that uh I'll, I'll try to um so obviously we've been at this for two two three years um we have held um by invite a residence and local business consultation events where uh, we sent out correspondence to all the residents and invited them to come and talk to us about the ideas, the concept, etc. Um, we did have um, you know exhibit images, etc. on Heritage Open Day, and then we had a public consultation event. And I, it it is something that um, people seem to have polarizing views on. Um, some people were very um, angry, and uh, had a lovely twenty minute to thirty minute one to one with one gentleman uh, during one of the exhibitions, quite a lot of people really in favour of it. Um, and um, it, it, it does divide opinion. And um, and obviously there have been, you know, no, numerous discussions with conservation officers, Historic England. We've even had in, um, uh, visits from the Society of Protection of Ancient Buildings and all sorts of things. So we're not over the line yet. I think there's still some discussions to be had with Historic England. Obviously, we're really conscious of how important this building is. It is an iconic building in probably the east of England, if not wider. Um, so, um, and obviously, design is subjective. And, um, and you know, I got into a bit of a debate with Historic England about a year ago when they talked about but, uh, the filling in of the arches as part of its architectural evolution. Uh, and in my mind, evolution doesn't stop. But that's just my opinion. So there are more conversations to be had with the regulatory body and particularly historic England. Um, they have responded to us on pre-application pre um, um, advice. We're taking that into account. So this has been written at this stage. I think there's some further conversations to be had. Um, but as I say, when we held the public consultation events, um, the, 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 the comments that came back, it was 50-50-ish roughly in favor and against. Um, so yeah, we'll, we shall see how we go. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Hannigan, I think you were next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got a couple of little questions. In the picture at the front, it shows sort of permanent benches. Is that just for the pictures or are you actually going to be putting some permanent seating? So I don't actually have an image I have my, my laptop open. Oh, right. Okay. So is this on the prayer fleet? Yes. So, yes. yeah, there, there is proposed to be some benches, but that area needs to be fairly accessible for uh, moving things like stalls and trailers on for, for, for events. Okay. Um, there has been a bit of debate about the existing anchor and anchor chain, um, and that is still under discussion. Yeah, that was my next question because uh, that, the, yeah. the chains, because they're sort of they are a bit of a link to our maritime history, and it would yeah. seem a shame to to remove them. I was wondering if a decision had been made on that. Yeah, I think that's still under discussion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Bale. You're next. Thanks, Chair. Matthew, um, I don't know this area very well, but this picture of this guy, the waiter outside seems to fit perfectly. I mean, you've got a building here which has to be sustained. It's, it's cost a lot of money and it costs a lot of money to sustain it. And I don't think having on and off exhibitions or, or things like that is, is a feasible thing to do. I know you said catering wasn't in the... Um, but it, it could be mixed with um, tu tourism, the um, um, tourist information with, with catering. And there's different types of catering and a high class catering establishment there. I think easy access to the town, to the car parks, is perfect, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah. Matthew Dunn, come up. Okay. Just to, to, to comment on what Councillor Bill said, you know, um, when we held um, one of the consultation events, it ran from kind of, uh, I think, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning through to about seven at night. 
and all the way through the door, I kept looking out the window and the sun kind of swept around and it shone on the riverside elevation of the building and on that public realm area. Uh, and it kind of set um, just beyond you know, the river. And um, I thought, what a fantastic location to sit, make a little bit of music play in the background, sit outside, glass of wine, or whatever is your poison, um, and just sit in such a beautiful location because it's stunning around King State Square. The building's stunning. And if we get it right, it could be fantastic just to sit there and, um, you know, high quality socialising. With the food offer, um, one of the problems that we, because it obviously was considered, um, but one of the problems is ventilation and extraction and trying to get um, uh, cooking fumes away. Um, it, it was deemed too difficult to try and get extraction through a significantly grade one listed building. Um, so, so that was dropped a little while ago. And one of the other problems is, I've mentioned this before, is the floor area is quite small. So actually getting a commercial kitchen in and enough space for table covers um, was quite tricky. Um, although the outdoor space during the better months would uh, would have helped as well. So yeah, so we, we've looked an awful lot of options, um, but its location is, is is fabulous for top use you suggested. Thank you. Um, a couple of comments on that one is Marriott's Warehouse works works as a restaurant and covers some of the costs. Um, and then we've also got the, the little cafe at the walks. So we, we're not looking at something fantastic, but that's far smaller than this is. So um, well, I've got... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so just, just stick your mic on if you don't mind. Thanks. There are different offers of food. Um, Hans Tansen has gone through a uh, wasabi um, um, tapas type thing. Um, at the moment. Um, so there are lots of different offers that don't need to have big kitchens. Thank you. I've got Councillor Bob next, but no, perfect. I've got Councillor Bob next. Um, Councillor Beals, do you want to come back on each one of these as a portfolio, or do you want to wait to the end? I'll wait to the end. Sir. Excellent. Yeah, but in that case, Councillor, Councillor Bob next, if you don't mind. And then... Okay. You've got a great one this building. You're going to alter all the windows. There's no doubt going to be a clamour for a, a lift inside to get people up. Um, but as far as I'm aware, we don't own the building. So once we've done all this work and the lease comes to an end, have we got to... Um, or does the, does the owner of the building greatly benefit from what we've done? Um, and on the food offer, um, yes, you, do, you don't need to have masses of cooking going on. It can be tea and cakes. Um, if you go to St Albans, there's a very, um, the town hall there has been repurposed to a museum and a cafe. Uh, it's a, not only slightly younger than this building here, and that works perfectly. And they, they just serve tea and cakes and, and things that they bought in, sausage rolls and all that. Works wonderfully, but the same, my worry is that we don't own the building. Mm. So, um, Council Bob and Council Bill are correct. You know, there are different types of food offers, and you know, as part of this process, we did talk about the um, the light bite sort of um, setup, we kind of like what Crofters used to have at the Guildhall because they were in a contained space and you know, they could offer quiche and salad and jacket potatoes and sandwiches and tea and coffee. And again, that could be part of its function, and because it helps with the financial sustainability going forward, so that might actually support other things like the exhibitions and the more community-based or tourism-based stuff that people want to see happen. Um, the, the, the ownership of the building, uh, yeah, it's interesting because we have engaged with uh, the gentleman who owns the building uh, or the trust that owns the building. Uh, and I have tried to buy it from him several times. And um, so we have quite a lengthy lease left on the premises. And depending on what happens with this process, we'll be looking to renegotiate the lease and seek to extend it. And I will keep trying to buy it from the gentleman. And um, yeah, so we have quite a lengthy period. And also under the landlord and tenant legislation, we also have a right to renew at the end of the lease. But we will be talking to him about the value of the investment that's potentially going to be made in his building. I just ask, what's the trust's thoughts on us doing this to the building? Are they content? We're fully supportive. Um, I think um, I think the gentleman concerned was more keen on a food and drink offer. Uh, actually, kind of just 
thought it would go bomb uh, and probably want to charge us more rent for it. Um, but um, but obviously he accepts that it's a, a, he he says he loves the building and that's why he bought it and he wants to see the best thing happen for it. Um, and again, everybody has different views on design and um, he, he kind of got the concept of opening up the arcades, but obviously there are other discussions to be had about that. But yeah, he's, he's fully supportive of it and he came along to the public consultation events as well, so. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Dewey, you're next. Do you want to speak as a portfolio holder or as a councillor? Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to ask for a clarification, if I may, please. Uh, which I think is probably the best I, I, I should be asking for. Uh, I note that Historic England's uh, comments uh, involve flood defence details are to be developed. Um, what is envisaged uh, in terms, because I understand the building as it stands is, is part of the flood defences and the renovations look less resilient. So um, it, really, when will the flood defence details be worked up and what is currently envisaged, if you have any of that information, please? Yeah, so that's yeah, so, a very good point. Yeah, so Chair, I don't actually have uh, that detailed information. However, it's been very, everybody's been very aware of the situation because as you say, all the way along the, um, the, the key front, you know, buildings, form part of the defences, and that's why window sills are at a certain level, for example. Um, and the, the, the current, um, some of the properties of Perfleet Street, for example, have uh, kind of drop gates in um, where they go across the, um, the the doorways. And I don't know if you're aware, but um, the, there's a little dwarf wall around um, the side of the building, and there's some metal sheets, and there used to be floodgates held in there just in front of the, um, the the custom house and they were lifted out and put across Perfleet Street. We were quite surprised when we lifted the covers and the gates weren't there. We thought, oh grief, that's a bit of a risk. Um, but to the environment agency have them actually stored off site and when there's going to be a high tide and a flood, they come and physically put them in. Um, so um, so yeah, so so yeah, everybody's very aware that those openings into the, the elevation will impact on the resilience um, and that is going to be designed. There's going to be a design to you know, make sure that it's not worse than it was before. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Coffs, please. Thank you. Uh, I want to speak in, in favour of what Councillor Council Beals spoke about. I think you can make good use of this building. Um, I was going to ask about the leasing arrangements, um, but I now convert it's an, an individual who, who owns it. It's not because some of the what I was going to ask is. Could it be licensed? Some people who own buildings that are listed buildings, they don't allow it to be licensed. And I wonder if there's any, any restrictions on that particular building, because I think it's ideal that the way Paul Bill spoke about it, the way it could be and where it is, it's an ideal place for that. And uh, I hope that it could be licensed. I don't know what the views are of others. Especially where the sellers are there already as well. So when you mean licensed, you mean kind of liquor license? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, well, I mean, that's uh, for a licensing uh, committee to look at. And oh, you know, no, So, okay, so um, the lease agreement does um, have what's called a user clause in it that says it shall be used for this, that, and that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that will be part of the discussions uh, that we'll have with the owner. It very much depends what we propose to do with it because some of the use will fit within the existing lease, but... Obviously, for our purposes, we want to broaden that user clause, and that would be part of the discussions with the landlord and property owner. Thank you. Um, any other councillors? Because I've just got a, a couple of things then. Um, in the plans, it looks like there's five toilets upstairs. Is that not a little bit excessive? You know what? I haven't actually counted them, but um, I think it's... Um, I think the architect's done it on the basis of if you have an event and the building is X square meters, you can therefore get X number of people in it. Therefore, you need Y number of toilets, I believe. But I can check that with the um, uh, with the architect. So they may have put in enough to so you can maximize the number of people in the building at any one time. But I will, I will check that for you. Yeah, that, that could definitely be worth looking at. I've been in far larger venues with far, far fewer yeah. toilets. Um, I know we've got the click building. Um, has, has the analysis been, analysis been done about the uh, demand and need for, for the proposal on this, or opening it for uh, events, et cetera? 
so there was um, some original work done by some specialist consultants uh, back in 2023 or 22, I can't quite remember. And they put together with another sub-consultant a kind of range of events, um, but that was a that was a broad one. That was for all the public realm and the custom house. So there there was some high level uh, assessments of of kind of the kind of business case for doing stuff from the um, uh, within the custom house, which I I think possibly was still running at a loss, um, but. Things have moved on since then, and um, that that does need to be relooked at. I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, right, upkeep costs. Beg your pardon, sorry. The upkeep costs of the building at the moment. Do any does any of that fall to us? Um, and are we looking at trying to cover some of these costs? Yeah, we we are totally responsible for the, right. the repair and insurance of the building uh, under the terms of the lease. Okay. Um, and then the, the last one I've got is about the sellers. Are we looking to do something with the sellers? Uh, so the sellers, um, they are, uh, I've not actually been there myself, but I understand the head room is not good. Um, so actually trying to make use of that space would mean significant excavations. That was messing around with foundations on a on the buildings. And I think you have to be quite brave. And obviously the, these designs have been done within a certain budget um so it's been told you, you've got to create a project that fits within a budget it's not like let's we want to do this and here's you know then we go now you've got to pay for it with this budget it's kind of set by the the constraints of through the town deal you've got x pounds make a project fit to the the x pounds thank you so people like myself who are the optimum height wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem down there then yeah <laughs> i'm confident in that yeah um councillor colwell do you want to add anything on under 34 are you still there? Have you dropped off again? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, is there no more questions, Councillor Beals? Thank you, Chairman. Um, very wide ranging discussion. Yeah, useful as ever. Um, <laughs> Councillor Bone raised a, a number of important points, uh, some of which I'd, I'd like to address. That, that there has been some comment and, and some uh, disagreement. And I have to say, you refer to, to influential people, and I think. Uh, that's fair to say. I have to say some of that comment could have been rather better put. It was somewhat histrionic and pretty uninformed, and I think um, every right to expect rather uh, higher value comment to have been made. Nevertheless, the point of concern is entirely entirely valid. But I, I think in a wider sense, there should be far more concern if this council had no regard for the building at all. And the position we're in, and, and I think we've come to the figures, is there's quite a lot of public money sitting behind this, uh, these proposals. Whatever way, shape or form they take, and there is a lot more discussion to be had with Historic England, um, in order to bring the building back into, into use. And that's the way to conserve anything. That principle is, is established through every conservation body in, the, in, in this country. The way to conserve something is to use it. At the moment, it's very difficult to use. Some will object to there being a lift uh, and there being toilets. If you're going to use something, you've got to make it usable, as we say. Uh, so I, I think those aspects are, uh, speak for themselves. The number of toilets upstairs, I question that, and I, I, please do check, but um, the architects concerned, Graham Massey uh, architects, they're based in Edinburgh, I think, certainly Scotland, um, and, and the reason for that is why not local architects? Because it was based on expertise, not geography. They're, they're, they're very able people. He's a very affable individual, Graham Massey, and hugely knowledgeable. I had a look around the, the place with him and questioned that. He said, it's legislation. He went up to the rooms on the second floor, which are lovely, but because he can't get up there, they're, they're, they're not accessible. But I think, to my view, it's something of a triumph. Putting aside the days, and I'll come to those, to, to, to get access for all to this building. Is the, the room upstairs is absolutely stunning, as we, as we know. So to get access there, I, I think that, that there's merit to that, and Historic England broadly agree with that. They want more work done. There's there's also there's also a demand for a, for a business case, as you referred to, Chair, which I think uh, is perfectly um, 
understood and justified, I think it's really difficult to make a business case to say um, Smith & Jones are going to come in and run this and do that and it's all going to be wonderful. I think the point has been made, and I completely agree, that making a versatile space for whatever use best suits it, whether it be a tourist information centre, it was, there's a lot of appeal to that, but tourist information centres now can be run off QR codes and the like alongside a retail offer of some sort. So there could be uh, dual use. So I, I think that's a that's a point very well made. The key for me is one of the parameters of the town deal board was public use. And I think that's hugely important. This building needs to be in use. People need to be able to get in it and enjoy it. Turning to the, to the arcades, it, it opened in 1685. Interestingly, Historic England, say 1683, that was when it was commissioned. They built it in about 18 months. Very impressive. When it opened in 1685, those arcades were open. They were open for the next 57 years. When it became a customs house, probably earlier, but as a demand of the customs house, they had to close, or they felt they had to close those arcades. And that's subjective, isn't it? And, and you may have heard me say this before, and apologies if I have, because um, the, the to use an analogy, the, the, the view from most country houses is a capability brown landscape. Now, there are two views in Brown. One is that he's the greatest living Englishman because of these wonderful vistas he created. The other is that he's the greatest living vandal because he re removed all the original uh, Elizabethan parterres, which were around all those homes. They survive in a few places, not many, because it was trendy. They all, they all did it, swept it away. You could say the same thing here. Is it vandalism to open these things up? Or is it actually a nod, a respect of the original design whilst making it usable in the modern environment. You have to go back to the 17th century and say, had they been able to glaze those openings, was it available, not, not little small panes and lots of iron, but at virtually one sheet of glass, would they have done that? I'd suspect they would. Keep the weather out, get the light in. Let's not forget a key part of architecture. I'm no architect. Uh, I'm not qualified in any way, but I think we all know is where the light plays, where the light hits. And the light is not getting in this building, as was intended when Henry Bell finished those wonderful drawings and informed by Hook, he worked with Hook closely um, in 1683. So I think there, there's two strands to this, conserve the thing through wise use, but also respect the heritage. And I, I think there's a, a, a further conversation to be had there. But I, 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 including meetings with some of the people you're referring to, that, one cabinet member has already, already met, that'll be further, but this is a town deal board thing, let's not forget, this town deal board money. Uh, so I, I, I've raised this and would encourage them to uh, to take all those issues into, into consideration, but fundamentally it's about how do we think bring this thing back into use in a way that suits the town. I don't, I don't have a view, I don't care. I just want the money to be spent the building to be respected and to it work. If it works as a tourist information centre, brilliant. If it works as a some sort of light catering establishment, also with tourist information and that, even better. But if people can get in it, they can enjoy it, and it's in better condition than it is now and open, I think that's a, that's something to celebrate, Chair. And, uh, and and thank you for the for the uh, discussion. It's really useful. And Councillor Hendingham and I will take it back to the town field board and. Uh, and, and talk to them about it. So thank you. Thank and you. thank you for allowing me the time to speak at length again. Thank you. Well, how do I sum up after that? <laughs> um, so, it's, it's do you want to speak to him, Matthew? Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair. Please. I'll just remind you, we're only part way through the presentation. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. So, so, how do I sum up after that? Um, the building's clearly in, in capable hands between the, the pair of you. Um, it is really good that we're going to do some sort of use with it and not just have it sat there. So it's quite reassuring. Um, back over to you for the next bit. Okay, so thank you, Chair. Um, so we're now moving down the, the South Key to Devil's Alley. So a little bit of um, background. Um, uh, yeah, I think in a previous life, I worked with uh, Council Beals um, and um, we acquired uh, some sites down um, at the bottom end of um, South Key. Sorry, can you go on to the next slide, please? Um, so yeah, so so back in the day, um, uh, the the former bank's Car Cargill uh, grand seller site, I think, ceased. 
economic activity in about 2002, 2003. Uh, and I tried to buy it for the local authority at that time. In the end, I think I bought it in 2015, 2016. Um, and um, I bought it from McCarthy and Stone at the time and it had planning permission for about 50 odd flats, uh, which members didn't particularly like and they would got that planning permission on appeal. Mm. Um, so when we looked at it, um, the you can see that the, the, the grain cell site is split by a pathway, which is known as Devil's Alley, which is a really quite historic way um, that runs down to the river from Nelson Street. So when we looked at the site, they kind of flagged the issue that the, the southernmost part, or on the right-hand side of the footpath, as you look at that larger photograph uh, on the left, um, it's right next to the mill fleet, which has got a significant drop, and it's got a, an old red brick retaining wall. So, so the question I asked myself was, well, if you put a big building on that, is it going to is it going to end up in the in the mill fleet at some stage? And that's when this sort of idea started to um, come about about creating a sort of a high quality public realm space, because obviously if you had to shore up the wall of the mill fleet, um, that you'd never get your money back from the site that you've you've, you've uh, safeguarded. So it's kind of like actually, if we put something relatively lightweight on it, it doesn't have to do the retaining wall issues. And then we just focus on the on the northern part of the grain silo site. And then over time, the, the, the site next door to the grain silo site, the Sunfeld and Thomas site, came on the, on the market. And that was on the market for a long time. And then eventually ended up managed to acquire that from the then owners. Um, so obviously, uh, talk about the public realm. So the idea, uh, the project brief was about a pu flexible public realm. Uh, again, so for a, a place to set up events, small scale events. Uh, sorry, part of the rationale is this authority is pretty good at big events. So, um, you know, the, the music festival, allegedly one of the biggest in Europe, free festivals, we've got Forks and the Walks. Uh, there's other things that go on, uh, Hanseatic Festival, the Heritage Open Day, the Water Ski Championship up on the river and this sort of thing. So it was about creating a space where you could hold smaller events, uh, potentially, as well as being a high quality public realm for residents and visitors uh, at other times. So, um, we've got planting areas here, and we'll come on to that. Both I'm not very green fingered, and I might have to sort of defer to Councillor Beals, who's far more green fingered than I am. So, can we go to the next slide, please? So, this was what was originally proposed um, under the Reba Stage 2. Remember, that was concept, and we've moved on from here. So, another polarizing um, element of this was, there was the, 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 the tower. Um, so, uh, or the gun tower, as it was sometimes referred to. So that was quite a polarizing thing. And obviously over time, that has fallen away. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the, the stage three proposals is a, is a sort of far more scaled back um, thing, um, which has a sort of covered area and some greening on it. And the covered area is meant to be a sort of a live thing. You know, it's, 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 it's gonna be covered in climbing and draping plants. Um, and there's some there's some uh, photographs of the various species, and in theory, throughout the season, you'll get changes in colour, changes in smells, and this sort of thing. So, next slide, please. So, obviously, there was um, a consultation event, and this is the feedback, and this is what's been sort of fed into the stage three designs. And I'll leave you to sort of read those at your leisure. So, next slide, please. These are just some images, you know, one from actually on the river, looking back towards the Sunfeld and Thomas, which on the left-hand image you can see towards the left-hand side. Um, and in the distance, you can see uh, the um, listed building, uh, forgive me, I've, I've forgotten its name, Hampton Court. Um, and I think some of the, um, the colours for, sorry, some of the materials and the colours of material used over time. Um, so, Originally, I think there was kind of a, a kind of a, almost like a yellowy brick proposed, and then it was uh, a galvanized steel, and now we've moved into a sort of a, of a, of a more mix of mosaic red brick and um, uh, more reds, and that, that was about tying in with the Sunfeld and Thomas in terms of its 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 painting and its brickwork. Uh, next slide, please. So these are just some images showing, um, you know, the, the covered way, which again is, is is meant to be set up with, um, you know, services so that you can hold, uh, put stalls in there, etc. And there's a kiosk proposed that could be a permanent thing, um, and uh, hopefully a really pleasant place for 
um, people working in Kings Lynn or residents to go and sit and have a lunch or, or congregate, um, you know, when there's no events on. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, there, there's trees shown in there. So the idea yeah. is that that immediately tries to soften the area while some of the planting establishes itself. And it's proposed that there will be relatively mature trees planted, but obviously that needs to be after to maintained because, you know, we don't want trees failing on these sort of things. Again, it's just some images from different parts of the proposed um, public realm space. Uh, and you can see sort of the climbing plants, et cetera. And part of the rationale behind that was not just about biodiversity, um, but it was also about transitioning. So you've got quite a hard urban landscape as you come down the, um, uh, the South Quay. And then you've got these sites, um, and then you've got the Mill Fleet, and then you've got Bull Quay. Um, which is, is is quite a biodiverse area, and it was sort of seen as if you if we got the planting right, um, it would be that almost like transition site between the hard urban environment to that sort of softer um, area at, at Bulky. Uh, next slide, please. And again, just some images, and that's a, a post play area in one corner uh, of the, of the site. Next image, please. And now this is just a series of. Um, Images just showing what potentially could happen on the um, the, uh, uh, the site. So they're talking about sort of live performances. So there could be, you know, as the guild hall takes shape and that link with um, Shakespeare is established. You know, you could put on some open air Shakespeare or some other stuff. I mean, it's just it's a blank canvas basically what we're creating. Um, and uh, what I mentioned to mention was that there's some facilities built into the structure where you can store things like seats. And then there's a little building just beyond the public realm area that we own that could also be used for storage as well so that uh, you can uh, keep things uh, in close proximity. Next image, please. And again, it's just showing sort of a market stalls where you can set up a relatively small event. Next slide, please. Sports and leisure, you know, bring in temporary skate ramps for a short periods of time. Now, obviously, that is quite contentious near residential. Um, so uh, but these are just ideas thrown in to show you what how flexible the space could be. Next slide, please. Summer fair. So, you know, there could be like a, an urban beach uh, put in there, um, you know, for a few weeks in the summer. Um, you can have an ice cream stall, you know, a tiki bar, a bit of music playing. Kids could play in the, um, well, sorry, anybody could play in the sand if they wanted to. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's been quite popular in uh, really built up areas like cities, for example, particularly where, um, you know, some, some kids don't get a chance to access the beach. Um, so putting something uh, like that might be sort of quite good for, for some local residents as well. Next slide, please. And, you know, winter fair, a, a temporary ice rink and uh, Christmas market. You know, there's these small events scheduled throughout the year that had interest in between the big events. Next slide, please. Uh, it's a food and drink festival, you know, um, could have an Oktoberfest, you know, beer festival, whatever, yeah. Next slide, please. That's just another image just showing a uh, food and drink festival. Next slide, please. Uh, again, just an aerial showing this sort of let, uh, set out, um, so I mentioned Devil's Alley. Uh, that is a sort of a, a public right of way footpath. Um, but the way it's designed is potentially if you're having a pay for event, um, you could you know segregate the area. So if, if you're selling tickets, that can be done. Next slide, please. That's just a, a view from the river, uh, showing it pretty much established with the Summerfield and Thomas site on the on the left. Next slide, please. And that's a view from the Summerfeld and Thomas site itself. Um, the, 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 the tall element with the, the, the circle, again, a bit divisive at times. They're kind of saying, what's it for? Does it block the view of the Summerfeld and Thomas site? Um, part of the proposal around the tower was a kind of a, 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 an interest point, you know, what's that? And draw people down the, uh, the key front. And, and that's what that's kind of intended to do. Uh, next slide, please. Again, these are sort of fairly architectural cross-section drawings, uh, just um, showing the site. Uh, next slide, please. 
and uh, the sort of planting uh, regime. I won't go through that in detail, but there's some images on the next slide. Next slide, please. So this will sort of give you an idea potentially of how um, ultimately the the, um, the elevations of the structure will look as it goes through the seasons, um, and hopefully as it establishes and becomes really established, um, you know, it will become quite quite a, a special place to to go and see it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, just some of the um, the planting. There's been quite a lot of work gone into the the type of species because of the location of the site. Um, because obviously we, we want to put stuff in that will survive and thrive. Uh, next slide, please. So that, that was Devil's Alley. Um, and uh, don't worry, dry side facility is quite a short one because it's a very small building. Um, but um, I'm happy to try and answer any questions. But if you've got any questions about plants, I'll defer to Councillor Beals. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, so at the moment, when you drive down the quay, that, that quayside could be such a beautiful area with, with the Marriott's, the Hansa House. It's just a lovely place to be. Unfortunately, you, you, at present, you do have to drive past this eyesore to get there. So yeah, it's really reassuring we're looking at doing something with it. And I am glad that tower has gone. Um, Councillor Bourne, over to you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, you're not going to get such a rough ride this time. Um, <laughs> I actually quite like it. Um, it's certainly removed, the removal of the gun tower is, is quite pleasant what i like about this i really enjoy the events of king's lynn uh I, but festival two comes a couple of the years the, the firework display but boy do i hear about it i know the windows are shaking on ferry lane and i know that the residents what i do like about this and potentially we're looking to put more more events on the riverside that is the purpose of this this offers mitigation against that annoyance to the re residents what live there um it gives a, sp a space to put the vendors. I had one resident, uh, uh, a Mr. Grint, who was stuck in his house because the burger van had set up and he couldn't get from his house on the thingy. This provides that space for that. I love the versatility of it, I, um, the versatility of what you could do so so much with it. Um, I love the, the steel that it nods to our industrial uh, past, and I love the actual plant and the living area. So I think this is a really good scheme. And I and in some places, having something quite modern, juxtaposed to something quite historic works. And in this instance, I actually do think it really will work, and I, I, I welcome this part of, of the space. Um, you probably will get a few comments made from the residents of Hampton Court and and uh, Nelson Street. But again, this is the place where a bit of modern architecture really will enhance the actual historic elements. So I actually welcome this. Thank you. Matthew? Um, it's a rather coast to work capsule bone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, you know, no, it's, it's great to hear. Um, and it's, it's interesting what you mentioned about um, Hampton Court, because what I forgot to say was, we're hoping that this site coming forward in this way will make the site adjacent more marketable. And um, we have got expressions of interest from a developer for a potential hotel. So, uh, and they're really interested in what we're trying to do here um, because obviously they will have a food and drink offer. Um, and obviously there's quite a shortage of, of, of hotel bed spaces. So they're kind of quite interested in taking on the Sunfilm Thomas and the Northern part of the brain cellar site. Now, obviously, they've got to be very respectful to the listed buildings around, but I've spoken to the Preservation Trust previously, quite a few years ago now, to be fair, where I said that whatever development comes forward on that site will respect Hampton Court, so I give it a bit of space that it's never had before, um, because I don't know whether members have seen photographs or even been in the Sunfeld Thomas before we took down the big portal frame uh, warehouse structure, but some of the windows at Hampton Court opened up into the, the, the warehouse. It was that tight. So um, we've done quite a lot of work to that um, some and Tom site and hopefully reasonably high quality development will come forward. That will create a little physical barrier to any noise coming through from any activities on here. And whatever activities go on there, it's got to be respectful to um, the, uh, the, lo the local residents. You know, we're not proposing to have a, a rave thumping away there till five in the morning, you know. Um, it is more, it is, it is for residents, local people, and tourists, you know, and possibly that's the priority, you know. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I can see the benefits of this during the daytime, definitely, and that wouldn't cause as much of a uh, disturbance. So I spend uh, a lot of time in Bristol. And down the, the um, sort of dock area to transform that and respecting the buildings at the same time. And they've got a, an area similar to this, albeit a, a lot bigger, where they put events on, etc. Um, there's little fountains there anyway, which in the summer is basically track like little paddling pools. And it's, it's really nice to see all the kids running around. So, yeah, there's plenty of opportunity. Right, I'm also from up north as well. And uh, I used to drive past the Angel of the North regularly. Um, to me, it was just a, a rusty old sort of I am I saw to be perfectly honest with you, and I, I get the design of it, but it just looked like it had been unfinished and just left it gone rusty. What we're planning to cover that in, because on here it looks a very similar rusty red to the Angel of the North. I don't believe it's rust. Um, I think it's a painted um, structure, yeah. but again, I'll come back to you on that sort of detail. Yeah, um, yeah it, it is definitely paint, but it just. Yeah. So, looks like so it, can I just clarify one other point is I think it came from one of the residents during the consultation. They said, I don't want a food stall there permanently. And I said, Well, no, no, no. It's about we're having a weekend event and you know, you have a food and then it goes away. Um, and then the rest of the time it's a sort of a high quality place for residents and to sit and yeah. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Hennigan. Yeah, I um I, I really like this. Um designed. I mean, I, I was supposed to be sure for a little while, but I think I'll, you've won me right this evening. Um, and I think it's a really good use of the, the space, as long as it gets used in the way that is um, laid out here. I mean, I'm assuming when you want events on, they will be council run type events. Um, I mean, as somebody said to you tonight, we're very good at running events in Kings Lynn, so I have um, confidence in that. Now, the only concern that I have is that um, I'm putting my board councillor hat on here, um, is that we do have a problem with antisocial behaviour and, and street drinking in, in the area. Um, and uh, I've had some residents comment to me that they see this as another area that could end up sort of that being used in, in such a way. Um, I mean, are we going to have anything like, uh, is anything like CCTV being considered? I mean, and also just going forward, also the maintenance of it and the upkeep. Um, I'm assuming that the borough is going to be responsible for, for that as well. So, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, the whole kind of uh, antisocial behaviour, street drinking thing has been mentioned quite a few times. So, we are going to have to address it and, and try and manage it the best we can. And um, yeah, CCTV is a, is, a, is a likely thing. It's just, if you spot it on camera, then what do you do? Who goes down at three in the morning? That's, that's the slight thing, because sometimes um, uh, the police might not want to attend or they might be busy on other things. Um, but um, so, so yeah, it's, we're very conscious of that because it is going to be a nice area for it to sit. Yeah. including for street drinkers so yeah we, um, but we don't want that no. so obviously the, the the best way to stop that street drinking is to make it used um and get more people there um, because it does tend to drive away the street drinkers yeah. you know um so the more popular it becomes the less likelihood there will be of that and and you know we'll, we'll see how that goes but we will try and put in place as, as much as we can to sort of try and prevent that we might not be 100% successful, I have to say, because it, 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 it can be quite persistent. Um, yes. We've found that near the library and all other places and this sort of thing. Uh, planting, yeah. And um, obviously, we, we have had issues with plants not making it. Um, we're very keen that this works. Um, and so we are talking with our public open spaces about um, ongoing management plan, uh, you know, uh, watering. And I mentioned the trees going in, they're going to be mature, so they will need significant management and watering to make sure they survive. Um, so yeah, we're putting that in place. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Councillor Bob, please. Thank you. Yes, it looks nice. Um, I like the trees, nice, big, expensive, uh, mature trees. Presumably the surface will be permeable so that they can get water. Um, but the tide comes in and they're dead. So is the, is the barrier system going to be radically upgraded so that they cannot get salt water on them. So, Chair, um, obviously people tend to shoot past the side and go, oh, it's a bit grotty. 
So what there is at the moment is a, a mix of um, fairly rotty uh, concrete block walls and brick walls and gates and this sort of thing, which actually form part of the uh, defences for Kings Lynn. So, um, you know, they, that will be dealt with as part of its development. Now, we we're just talking about the um, Millfleet side uh, of, of the grain cellar site. So, yeah, that will have new brickwork. And you, you may recall from the, the, the drawings, there's a, a triangular bit uh, with the path splitting across it, so that'll be a new wall, and then the, there'll be gates on there as well for uh, flood defences. Um, the ground, that's another interesting one. So during the course of uh, the investigations, we found some cellars uh, under the um, uh, under the site, and um, unfortunately, they weren't terribly usable. They're quite modern by um, Kingsland standards, uh, we've been liaising with Historic England and Norfolk Archaeological Trust and all this sort of thing because we got quite excited about oh they could be useful you could do something with the cellars and uh, um, but the head height again was quite low and um, so so they will go um, they'll be excavated out and then the the the, the, the area will be filled and the the, the soil will be uh, you know suitable to take a mature tree. Any other councillors wish to speak? Do you want to come back on that one, did you? Oh. Okay, Councillor Colwell, have you got anything to add? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to talk generally about uh, what we've um, heard with both of these, really, and my give my my support and um, excited by the fact that there's, you know, there's going to be, a, in effect, a third um, significant area whereby events can happen after the Tuesday Marketplace and King's Day Square and now um, the the Southern. Um, I guess um, I, I'm in, just briefly in relation to the um, the, the customs house. I'm one of the fifty percent that's actually in support of the, um, uh, the the return to how the architect intended. And then um, I think that this this uh, site in the south will complement that. I guess if I'm going to be honest. Um, I am a little disappointed that um, we couldn't be bolder and have uh, 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 the uh, the plans as they were originally sold to the community um, all along South Quay. Um, I remember seeing those initial designs with flags along along the waterfront, and it reminded me of when I went to Emmerich, um, our twinned uh, town, and um, and saw what they have done there and how they invite everyone uh, to to enjoy the whole. Uh, section of the river so um, I guess my question would be um, whilst um, it's been felt uh, too difficult uh, to, to, to take that step at the moment um, can we have any kind of reassurance that maybe there are uh, hopes that in the future we can look at that thank you um, yeah the, the good points um, the again the uh, the the, the posts and banners proved quite challenging with, uh, in, in the conservation area and near to listed buildings. Um, and there's proposal to be banners at Perfleet and that was considered to uh, spoil the setting of the custom house. Um, along the key front, we thought they were kind of quite important to draw people down um, at a point of inter interest and, and movement. Um, when you walk down the key front, it is quite dead frontage because it's mainly residential so people leave in the morning and then come back at night and there's not a lot of movement and you get the hot spots yeah. around the, the bank house and Marriott's where people sit outside and there's a bit of noise and movement and colour and um, yeah so that's that was part of that um, enhancement of that area, a bit of colour, a bit of movement with things moving in the wind and then a, a kind of a, a, I would say waypoint, that's not quite the point of interest at the, at the Millfleet end and it was about creating that uh, sort of, as I say, more lively uh, key frontage. Um, never say never, that's what I say. You know, um, we seem to be quite fortunate as a local authority or quite good as a local authority of securing external funding. Um, so obviously, I, I mentioned before, we had to do things within a budget. Um, so if things got a bit challenged and you're not going to get planning permission for that or we're going to object to that, we're just going to remove them and it helped us with the budget on, on other parts of it. Um, so you never know. Uh, there could be some further enhancements at some stage in the future when, if and when we get some more money. Thank you, Councillor Bob. <clears throat> yeah, Councillor Bob, please. Yeah. Um, saying about the front, the, the, uh, the waterfront, the, the late Councillor John Lovelace always maintained that when they 
surfaced the, the quayside. They didn't take up the railway lines. Um, and you go to places like Bristol, Weymouth, Swanage, Folkestone, they've got the railway lines exposed still, and they had a great deal of interest, particularly if you park the odd truck or something on them. So perhaps we could consider exposing the railway lines. It's only take a couple of minutes with a decent metal detector to establish whether they are still there. Um, but it's just that little la extra layer of interest, the history of the place. Um, for the children to want to, to go a long way, chuff, 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 or whatever they want to do, they may be diesel now. And um, so it, I think it might be worthwhile just exploring that um, idea just to see if they're still there. So, so Chair, right. yeah, I mean, that, that, that could be looked at. But obviously, that's going beyond the sort of project that, that I'm working on. But it is something that maybe we can have a look at the future because this authority will be around for a while. And as I said, we tend to be quite good at securing external funding and grant funding, this sort of thing. So whether this, we look at a next stage, you know, if we get the custom housing perfectly done, Millfleet done, what's next? Um, maybe that's part of the, the future planning for, for projects, for getting things, I hate to say, up and ready to make an application for some external funding. And it could be a kind of a, a link back to the industrial heritage of, of Kingsley and look at the, the railway line as it went down through Bulky or, or whatever. Um, the trouble we find is we start a project and it, it sort of grows arms and legs and, you know, oh, no, no, we've got to focus on what we're originally intended to do. Um, but I think, you know, it's a great idea. You know, we could look at that. And I think um, uh, to mention another late uh, councillor, uh, councillor Daubney, you know, he, 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 he saw these old Hanseatic cranes that used to lift goods off the boats and this sort of thing. So, you know, we all want to keep improving that evolution thing again, uh, Kings Lynn. So it could be this future enhancement. So it could link to the industrial heritage. It could link to the Hanseatic um, uh, cranage or whatever it was. So yeah, it, that, that would be another project to be funded by another funding stream, I think. Yeah, thank you. So the bit that's been playing on my mind all weekend is the, the little bit of a tower with a circle in the middle of it. And it's that nothingness in the circle. <laughs> it's been teasing me all weekend. What if we were to put a bit of glass in that and a projector, and then everything you just spoke about, the cranes, the Hanseatic, the ships, we were to project an image onto that glass. So when you're actually, actually going down there, it's something to, to look at and see, and celebrate a bit of the history of the place. Uh, I, that's an idea. Um, we, we, can, we can have a look at it. Um, it's interesting what you say about projections, because when we did the original ideas and took it in front of members. Um, I looked at uh, Liverpool docks, where what they've got is sprayed water and they project a ship onto it, uh, an old okay. mast ship. And when the wind blows, it looks like a ghost ship. Uh, so yeah, we toyed with all these sort of ideas. So um, yeah, if we sort of uh, note it down and me and Duncan will have a, a chat about it, because um, again, it could be a, another phase uh, um, that we could do to further enhance things. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Beals, would you like to add anything? I'll be very brief, Chairman. Um, thank you. Very positive conversation, and I think rightly so. Uh, it's a it's a strategic space, isn't it, in the town, and it, it's scrubby and contaminated and horrible at the moment. So to 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 improve it in this way, I think it's hugely positive, uh, particularly. The economic um, um, activity from that of improving the the, the the location, the setting rather of Sunfelt and Tom, Thomas, I think is hugely important. Um, I will just refer to the to the tower because there were some originally some budget issues with this, and, and I think Councillor Hennigan and I were both on the same page with this. Well, the price of steel was mentioned, and the price of materials, and our answer to that was, well, use less of it and put more planting in. Um, but actually, the it is it, it's a classic garden motif, if you like, a full stop at the end of a border, uh, you know, a box ball or a cone or, or a tree, depending on the scale. And uh, to all intents and purposes, I understand historic England like it in some form. They like the idea of a full mm. stop, to sh uh, and also as a marker, there's something here. So yeah. better minds than mine, fine. A, a lot of uh, talk about the future. <laughs> Future use and Councillor Colwell mentioned that originally it was it was a whole thing and the budget <laughs> the budget issues about that isn't there? But importantly, I think the idea is that you bookend it if you like, 
with an idea of doing that in the in the future. And of course, there is, um, and Duncan will correct me if I'm wrong. There is the a further twenty million pounds of funding to come uh, under the uh, longer term funding for towns. Have I got that right? Yep, that's right. Now that again is 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 the subject of it, it's government that pres prescribed how this is delivered, and it comes to effectively a slightly repurposed town deal board, town fund board. I think it becomes, but um, that's the purpose of council of delegates. We could go along and say, right, you know, one potential use could be. Uh, the, the waterfront. There'll there'll be plenty of hands out for that money, I'm sure. But uh, in addition to the existing 25 million for the town deal board, there is this 20 million coming along. It's over 10 years, two million a year. But that that is significant. And all these comments again are very useful. And as councillor reps will feed that back. So thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Did you want to add anything? I'll just add, yeah, that these opportunities. Um, are coming along and um, what Matthew said was was right and there's, there's every reason to think with um, more of this place-based funding that's allocated with this certainty that an allocation brings with it that we can we can be ambitious about these things and I think what we've done over the last four years or so with a lot of these um, the way we've developed some of these thoughts and some of them as Matthew said some of these ideas um, Rob's um, comments about the, the riverfront have have dropped away um, as we've had to sort of fit within budgets but the thinking behind them the, the rationale the testing with public we we've done all that we so we're we're ahead of the game in terms of developing these further and and putting them forward um, with this new funding so yeah every reason to be ambitious about going further as Matthew said thank you thank you very much I'm fully bought into the last two I'm not don't really get this one at the moment, so over to you, Matthew, and present the dry side, please. You'll be glad to know we're near the end. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this, this is a relatively light one, so uh, next slide, please. So a little while ago, the Borough Council put in um, some pontoons for sailing craft on the on the River Grey Twos and then extended them. And um, part of the um, rationale behind this was to actually provide facilities to um, visiting vessels and their occupants um, to enhance that and then hopefully draw more of that trade, tourist trade, into the into the town. So um, I mentioned earlier that we had acquired the Summerfeld and Thomas site. Uh, next door to it is a little building that you can see on the, the, the upper right-hand uh, image. Um, and it didn't look like that a while ago. Uh, it didn't have a roof and, and uh, didn't have any sort of uh, first floor floor. Uh, etc. Um, but we we had some yet more external funding to help us with the external fabric of Sunfeld and Thomas, and we addressed the external fabric of that building as well. So part of the idea is to create that facility for the visiting um, uh, sailing fraternity, with potential for a shower, wet room, maybe some washing machines, so that um, you know if you've been on, on on a boat coming around the coast for a, a few days or a week or whatever, you can actually do your laundry, etc but then also have a room that would be a map room, um, but also what else you can do in the area. So you'd identify places to eat and to the cinema and whatever, so that hopefully those people would actually then go into the town and spend. It is a relatively small building, so there's not a lot to see when we move on to the next images. Uh, so next slide, please. So previously um, there was an idea to put a freestanding building on the edge of the River Grey Twos um, but we don't actually have control of that site and, and the whole new build um, together with getting consent from probably the Conservancy Board um, just might have proven too difficult so we already have a building that can be adapted so that's the, the way we kind of went. Uh, next slide please. Um, so these are some images and it's a sad image on the right-hand side, I have to say. It's uh, very lonely, and uh, but that's just a show of the town space. Um, and obviously the walls would probably have uh, information boards and all that sort of stuff on, on there. Uh, but it's, it's just more of an architectural design to, to image to show uh, the space involved. Next slide, please. Um, and again, that's just a different perspective, really. Um, what there isn't is a CGI of the downstairs, which is where the main facilities are, actually. It's where the showers are and all that sort of thing. Uh, next slide, please. 
and that's just a layout. Uh, so you can see on the uh, left hand image, that's the, uh, I think that's the upper parts. Um, and then the middle image is uh, actually you can see the two shower rooms uh, and uh, just make out the sort of washing facilities there as well. Next slide, please. Again, they're just some uh, images that, uh, from a distance. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, so is this bit? Let me just check the slides. Is this closed session now? No, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I thought uh, it was the last page with the costumes on. But... No. So, um, uh, sorry. The, the program is set out. It'll, it'll, the program will be what the, is a bit dictated by uh, a number of things. Uh, but chair, happy to try and answer any questions on the dry side facilities. But it is quite a simple one, I think. So. Yeah. Well, I've got a few, but I shall throw it up onto the floor first, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Chair. Um, this one is um, what, what was it needed. I always felt that the pontoons were obviously a little bit premeditated. Obviously, if you're trying to attract tourists, you need the facilities to do that. And it's and it's not before time that we've got that. I did question the Scandi-looking sauna-type office thing, but you've explained <laughs> that uh, quite well. Um, yeah, so no, I think it's welcome. I think that will eventually give us what we want, more sex, tourist use and sailing use of the pontoon, which then kind of negates the needs of flags. But what we'll have, we'll have ship, we'll have masts. Um, and and that hopefully we'll see more more vessels parked up. I know there's a couple of fish, uh, fishing vessels that use, uh, which is a nod to our historic thing. So that would put... We might not need the need for flags because we'll have plenty of um, yachts, uh, uh, fishing boats with, with, with their masts. So, yeah, again, another one um, that, that I quite like. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Matthew, please. Sorry, Chair. It's a really valid point that Councillor Bowen's made, actually, because the um, Kingsland Conservancy Board have started to um, rent out moorings uh, to fishing vessels on the quay side, and it's just added a bit more interest because there never used to be boats moored up against there and they are modern commercial boats but even that just adds interest to the key fund you know people like to walk along have a look and this sort of thing and as you say if you've got more uh sailing vessels moored up at the pontoon and there's a bit of activity with the public realm all of a sudden it all starts to gel together i think and you, you're right you know they provide that point of interest you know that vertical thing that somebody looks down the key front and, and wants to wander down and have a look so yeah i agree yeah, thank you. So I grew up not too far from Whitby, and the the parking at Whitby is, is down the harbour side stuff. And you walk into Whitby Town, there's past all the boats, and that was the best bit of it for me as a child. So yeah. And um, any other councillors wish to speak on this? Okay then. All right, a couple of questions. Then. Um, is this going to be open twenty four hours a day? And and what we're going to do to protect against crime, vandalism, that sort of stuff. So um, the, the pontoons are currently operated by our public open spaces team. And I think they operate with a camera and we're talking about, you know, they'd hire a, a fob or there'd be a keypad, right. et cetera. And obviously it is down to the users not to leave it open, but in theory, there'll be a door that automatically shuts. And, you know, so, so yeah, we're, we're conscious that we don't want it to become a sort of hidey hole and uh, misused because uh, it'll cost us money to repair it and maintain it and all sort of things. So yeah, it'll be managed. Yeah, so you, you've kind of answered that already as well. So are we looking at extending the moorings and the pontoon to try and attract more boats in there as well? Um, I mean, the pontoons have already been extended. Um, uh, in theory, they could be extended further, uh, but we'd obviously have to agree with the Crown Estate and uh, the Kingsland Conservancy Board as well. Um, but there's no plans to extend them as far as I'm aware at the moment. Depends how popular they get. They get really popular. Well, there's a business case to be made, isn't there? Yeah, okay. Um, and that's the other bit is the, the business case. Most boats do have showers, toilets, etc. on them. So, is, is there a need for it? I get it for when the uh, the ski race is here. Yeah, hundred percent. Just think for the rest of the time. I'm not a sailor, um, I, <laughs> but the dry side facilities have been identified as something that everybody thinks will enhance the offer for the sailing fraternity coming round, particularly the washing machines. Um, uh, and I understand that. They can only carry so much fresh water. So if you've been at sea for a while, you yeah. have to fill it up and all that sort of stuff. So jumping in and washing your 
laundry and that sort of thing is his kind of bits, I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's good that we're doing something with it, isn't it, rather than just leaving it sat there. So, so yeah. Um, Councillor Colwell, did you want to uh, jump in? No, I'm fine. Thank you, Chair. Um, if there are no other councillors, then, um, Beals, Councillor Beals, would you like to add anything? Nothing to add. Thank you, Chairman. No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that one, then. So the recommendation in this one is uh, um, panel requested to note the update. So thank you very much and thank you for the additional bits that you've added in. The item 11 is exclusion of press and public. Do we feel we need to talk about the costumes of any of these projects and do we want to go into a closed session? Um, obviously, Chair, this is a town deal funded project and the project has been devised to fit with the budget available to us so the, the kind of budget is what it, is what the budget is so uh, i don't i don't think it needs to be talked about personally but if you want to happy yeah. to councillors what's your thoughts content i'll leave it there would you like to look at the uh, yeah okay thank you very much so no need to go into the closed session then so that'll be the meeting closed at 7 30. thank you very much